Hi, it's Grandpa Butler. Uh, we're going to do an elk today. We've already drawn the outline. After several pencil sketches, we eventually got down to about the right outline of what an elk would look like, and this is it. Uh, and then what we're going to do is the elk uh, him, himself with uh, these Van Dyke browns, a yellow, uh, indigo blue for the forehead, uh, and uh, a little bit of uh, English red. Then we'll do the sky uh, area, the upper part, uh, and we'll use uh, for the lake, we're gonna have the lake behind the deer, we're gonna use light blue and blue for the trees behind that, green and dark green. And then what we're gonna have here in the mountains, we're gonna use, uh, where are we gonna use? Ultramarine blue and a purple and a violet, okay. Uh, the sun will be coming down this way, so I'll have to keep that in mind when we uh, get these details in. And then in the foreground here, we'll use uh, ochre, uh, crimson, red, which you may also use for the antlers. A, a dark green for the grass, and for the ground here, we'll use this cinnamon and, uh, and the ochre together and see what we get, and with the rocks. Okay, that's kind of the plan here, so let's... Uh, let's get going with our with our elk here, and I want to put in. You know what I should do here is a little bit of blue here, uh, and then uh, what I probably need to do is the uh, antlers here. So I like the yellow here because that'll be a nice contrast with the kinds of reds and blues behind it. That'll be the mountains. And uh, I'll have to see how far I put the trees up when we do those in. So the idea here is to have fun, have a main object that we ink in, uh, put the watercolors in, and then come back. So I'm going to try my little bit of crimson uh, color here on kind of the sh potentially shadowy areas of the antlers. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But I thought just uh, bright yellow may be a little bit odd, so this may be worse. We'll see. Okay, and, uh, and then it looks like we have uh, our brown for our most of our body coming down here. Let's put a little bit of yellow around its eye here. Because uh, it looks like that's that way in the picture and the brown coming down here. And notice that uh, I am doing the crayon in the same way that I uh, see the fur in the animal uh, because when I use my crayon here I'm gonna let some of the uh, uh, some of the pigment of the crayon remain as part of my artwork here because uh, I like to have fun and uh, I like to have fun doing art and I don't want to but I don't want to spend all day on these. I want to be more expressive. Okay, so and then we have some for most of the body here. I'm going to have this red English. So I have this dark coat in front and this English red color here. Again, I'm trying to follow the way the body goes uh, and probably may need to make a distinction there between its head. So let me just put for the moment, Grandpa's thinking about it, let me put in a darker red right here where it's next to the to the mouth and the head. Okay, and now let's uh, light up our guy. So we've got a pencil. Pencil <laughs> brush here, and uh, we'll come.
come down and work on the green and yellows here. Looks like I may have a little bit too much water. That's okay. And get my brush frequently, especially when I change colors. So the yellow with the bits of crisp crimson in seems to be working out just fine. I'm okay with that. In fact, uh, I kind of like that. So kind of the bluish color here because these animals and then the ears, we haven't made any distinguishing marks for the ears here. So I'm just going to put in some dark, a little bit of dark there and just leave that there behind it a little, leave it light. Okay, so I'm coming in here with the head. And this Toledo Brown seems to be not as dark as I expected. That's okay. We'll have to see it. Every one of these watercolors is a kind of new experience for combination is a new experience for Grandpa. Uh, and as you will see, we do all of this in kind of one take. That is one pass of the watercolor brushes and friends and other things that are being employed here. So I like those combination of colors so far. What if I got my Toledo brown though while well, this just a little bit? That's not too wet, is it? Let me work it in a little bit more here and there. I like that better. I think it may be ideal. Like a rough coat there. I like that. I'll just leave that cram, cram finish there, and then I'll come down and get uh, get the legs here. Okay, I'm okay with that. In fact, on the on the picture, the underside of the mouth is a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, whitish, so I'm good. Yeah. And a little bit too much water in there. So okay, what next, gang? Uh, let's do let's do the uh, tree on on the opposite bank. And then we'll do the, maybe the waters in the mountain. So I'm going to have a bunch of uh, pine trees, or maybe these are firs, maybe even some spruces. I'm thinking uh, uh, some fir trees, some Douglas firs or white firs or whatever you have in your territory. So this is my, my dark green. I'm doing here, I'm just kind of establishing. One thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be like too symmetrical as I go from tree to tree. Okay, and so I don't want to have them ex exactly even in space. I have a lighter green here. I'm going to bring in here on the trees and mostly do it on the one side, a little bit in the background here and there too. Okay, maybe a background light green tree there and there and in here. Um, so we don't want to spend my girlfriend of 50 years and wife of 49 years has reminded me that we don't want to spend all day on trees or any one specific kind of in the background. So with her urging and her noting this important truth about trees and life and having fun while you do this. Uh, there we go. There's our trees in. Now uh, our lakes only, I think before I do the lakes I'll just do the bottom of the tree so they kind of be drying off before I do the lakes in and hence 
I won't be mixing the colors as, I, as much as I might otherwise do. So I'll bring this back, a little bit of brush, and uh, I'm working left to right and letting these colors blend. Not trying to get rid of the pigment, but leaving the pigment in there as part of the tree. Grandpa's hands shaking a little bit. It's a neuropathy. So let's see if we can give him some more support here. And that shaking is well, it's working good for the tree thing, isn't it? Uh, I find that doing these watercolors not only fun, but I find it helps with my neuropathy a bit. So that's kind of nice too. Economies of scope. Okay, so here we go here. And now we've got our trees in. Now let's come back and do the water in front. So the water here, I'm thinking in this lake here and I have not tried many of these lakes and so I'm still not sure what the correct way to do this is but we want the crayon pigment to go horizontally like we see waves in the water right if we're going to imagine this is a lake here and again, don't want to spend too much time because it's a background element. Uh, we also want to stroke that with our pen that way. So that's our lighter blue. Let's do our dark, put a little bit of dark blue in here and be kind of a little bit more careful to make these lines of, of lake. More dark blue on the other shore, more liney things near the other shore, and uh, when you get closer to us, a little bit more darker, wavy kinds of motions in our strokes. Okay, I'm going to try that out. Let's see how we, how we did here. Now, if I had a lot of practice, I would know what the correct ratios were and how to get this in. That's one of the ways, uh, things I've been doing. So I've been doing this style of watercolors only since May of 2021 and uh, decided for a quick and easy way of doing art. Uh, it's kind of fun and when I was doing this with some of the grandkids, uh, for the grandkids, my daughter in law suggested, well, why don't you put some of this up online so when we move away we can still have it. Uh, we can have it to look at anytime. So that's the origin of this these YouTube videos. Okay, sun's coming in this way. Uh, maybe a little bit more kind of yellow hues on the back here. Let's put that in with ochre and down the neck here like that. And now let's do the background mountain scene here. For this, uh, we're going to do the outline kind of in. Okay, Grandpa, quit shaking so much. Kind of in these colors here. Okay, that's good uh, outline. So this is my purples. I always imagine purples being a little darker than this, but that's what it's labeled at. And I'm having a ridge come down here and out here. And then I'm having a break off. So I'm doing purple up there. And I'm going to 
again, let some of the pigment in there. So the purple is kind of where the light is hitting it from. All kind of wonder, wonderful colors, depending on time and day that show up. So let's have a ridge here. So we've got a purple coming up here, up into that. So that's all part of a ridge there. And by way of contrast, I'm going to put a few purple lines down here and there, maybe one kind of in this valley. Um, by way of contrast, we will have some ultramarine blue on the dark side here, uh, coming down into here. And I'm trying to get this crayon to sort of move in the same way that I would think I would see the mountains form. So here, come down here, kind of cliffy things there, so up and down strokes there, coming down here. And then, uh, then we have the valleys. Maybe put a little bit here, oh, on the edge of that cliff, come down that way. And then uh, we're going to have, at the bottom of the valleys, we're going to have this purple coming in like this. And I kind of like that combination already. It looks like it might work. Uh, and let's put a little bit of texture in the mountain here. And uh, again, I'm planning on leaving some pigment behind, so that's going to help define our mountains here. Okay, let's try and lighten that up, and then we have the foreground. So, um, thank you for watching. If any particular animal you want to see done here in this style, let me know and we'll, we'll try and do it. Um, we have got uh, this wonderful kind of crayons. When you get used to them, you can use the putting in the crayon as part of the creating the structure of the, the piece that you're painting or putting in. So, since this is in real time, the thing I have to watch out is putting my little pinky into some wet area I'm working back around that I have been away from. Okay, I think that's okay for the mountains. Okay, foreground here. Now the foreground we have, uh, we have the dark, the dark grasses here and there. We hinted at those dark grasses with the lines. And um, again, we don't put in every single blade of grass, but we can hint at it like so. We have uh, the shoreline here. I'm thinking that's a kind of ochre color like this. What do you think? I think that's going to work. I think that's going to probably work fine. And then uh, what we're going to have is uh, the rocks, right? And for that, what have I chosen? This kind of brown, cinnamon brown. I don't know. How's that going to work? Yeah, I think that might work fine. We'll find out in a minute and put some color on it. And then the other color, kind of the darker color, the out of the sunlight color, is going to be uh, a crimson, a kind of dark reddish color. Now it's the out of light and it's also where the stone is exposed, the innards of the stone got exposed maybe just like 10 or 20,000 years ago when 
Macedons were hauling these rocks back and forth to build their villages. Yeah, I like that story. So my grandkids can let me know if that actually wasn't quite the history that they heard about in school. Okay, so again, we leave some pigment behind. We don't want to rub too much back and forth because it, you can see how much kind of fun it is just to see it dissolve and create its own kind of interesting patterns when you work with it. Okay, now uh, let me do the ochre and then come back and try and go up and down on the grass. I'm uh, not always sure, haven't done this enough to know the best exact order to do these colors in, to activate the nymph, but eventually you and I will work it out together as we, as we do these pictures. So this is the ground here, kind of we're imagining some sand, clay, uh, light clay color there, and then we're activating some of the grasses here and there. And okay, so uh, what I think I need to do is just add more highlights into uh, into the deer. I said deer, but I meant, I meant elk, of course. Uh, most magnificent one I think you ever saw was coming back over Boulder Mountain very late at night uh, after a backpack with the grain, some grandkids. A magnificent animal just standing on the hillside watching us. But I think, I think I'm okay with that. So I hope you had fun too. Uh, notice the highlights here. And uh, love you all. Take good care of yourselves. Be kind to one another, please. Bye-bye.